Hello, in this video, we're going to see about load balancer service of Kubernetes. It is good to have some understanding of the cluster IP and node port services of Kubernetes before we begin this video. So let's go ahead and create a deployment. Let me show you the manifest that we have prepared already for the deployment. So this is something we have been using for the other service types also. We're also going to use a similar deployment manifest here. This deployment should create three pod replicas, each with an Nginx image. So let's go ahead and create the deployment. Okay, the deployment is now created. Let's see if the pods are running successfully. So the containers are getting created. We could use the watch flag to see the live status. Now I think it's running. Now we can go ahead and create a load balancer service. So the manifest is here. So on this manifest, the difference, the main difference between this manifest and that of a node port or a cluster IP manifest is that the spec type is load balancer. Other than that, the rest of the configuration is all same. Like the name of the name of the service, we have used something like SVC hyphen LB hyphen cube terrain. You've got the label the label selector that has to match with the pods that we created. And uh, we are going to use the service port as ATAT. This is also going to be the service port that the load balancer uses. So please note that this port ATAT will also be used by the cluster IP as well as the load balancer. Both the services are going to use the same service port. The only extra port that we don't see here is that of the node port, which is a random number. We would have already seen this in the uh, session of node port that it has got a range of 30,000 to 326767, which we don't have to specify as per the recommended practice. The target port is going to be AT, which is the container port. And in this case, we are running an Nginx pod, a web server, which has got 80 as its default port because it runs HTTP. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the node, sorry, the load balancer service. It's created. Let's see the status of it. The external IP is pending. So one difference between this and the other service types is that the load balancer service is going to have is going to obtain an external ip from google cloud which is nothing but a public ip and creating a load balancer is also going to create the underlying service types which are node port and the cluster ip service so if you create a load balancer service a node port service is also going to be created a node port is also going to be assigned and in this case it's 30053 which is the node port and it is also going to create a cluster ip for us so we have like three different ways of communicating with a group of pods let's try to hit the command again and see if an external ip has got assigned and it's assigned right now so this is the ip in this case and in your case the public ip could be something different and this could also get changed once we delete the service and create it again so we have an external IP. Let's try to call this external IP, the load balancer IP from the cloud shell. Curl 236, 35236180.67. And the port is going to be the same port that the cluster IP service is also gonna use, ATAT. It works. So that's it, that's about the load balancer service. The main use is that this IP can be used from anywhere, just that it needs to have the access from the internet. 
So if I have to kind of uh, uh, use, try to access this IP from my browser, I should be able to do that. So let me try to access this from my browser. Let me just copy the uh, IP as well as the port number. Since it uses a different port number, which is not the default 80, what HTTP uses, we'll have to put the port number also, which is 8080. So I'm going to you. I'm going to put the IP as as well as the port number on the Google Chrome browser, and I should be able to see the Nginx homepage. So that works. So this is all about load balancer service. Just to recap, like we saw that load balancer service would also create a cluster IP as well as a notebook, which are the underlying services. We have not seen much about the deployment. We have created the deployment. So it, it's good to have some basic understanding of deployment before watching this video as stated in the prerequisite section of this video. We thank you for watching this video and hope it was useful.